Welcome to the Weekly Lead Podcast for week one. I'm Becky Tirabasi, your host, and my goal is to inspire you weekly to be, first of all, loyal to God's Word. We're going to be using the Change Your Life Daily Bible, 365-day Bible, and in just 15 minutes a day, I'm going to encourage you over each week to read through in 2022. I'm going to give you a look or a peek at the week of what's ahead as you read through the Bible. I'm also going to be encouraging you through this little segment with an E, with an encouragement, with a story, an illustration, maybe even an interview on occasion to encourage you to be an encouragement to others. I also will have a little segment on being an advocate for the young generation, and everyone must be and can be an advocate for the young generation. My own story always compels me to be that advocate for the young generation of adults and students who struggle with suicide attempts and substance abuse. So I'll bring a resource or a source for you each week in this area of advocacy. And finally, devotion to prayer. Will you be devoted to prayer? I'm going to ask you to become a part of a praying nation, part of revival, which is simply a new obedience to God by praying for our nation's leaders as students and adults. All in, every day, okay? Let's go. I mean it. I um, have titled the podcast The Weekly Lead because I believe we're all leaders, and God is asking us to be leaders. So this loyalty to God's Word, a tenet um, that has been a part of my life for over 37 years, I've read the Bible daily, is not something new. But in fact, as you read through the Change Your Life Daily Bible, you'll begin in the New Testament, Old Testament, in Matthew and in Genesis, and then a psalm and a proverb every single day. It takes about 15 minutes a day. You just start with today's date. So January 1, you read about creation. And boy, it goes quick in um, Genesis. You're going to simply um, have this arc of creation to human beings. Suddenly, there's a flood. And soon, very quickly, we have Abraham. But on top of that, From Genesis all the way to the end of the Bible, you're going to hear about Satan or evil. And and, and so many of us think, well, what? Wait. Um, A new friend of mine, an author, uh, Heather Johnson, wrote just something simple that I thought would be helpful to all of us as we open up the Old Testament and immediately get confronted with this snake. She says, the evil one is a great illusionist. He's highly religious and self-righteous, and he's a counterfeit of God in power and relationships to humanity. Demons, in fact, exploit the truth and encourage dishonesty. They cover worthless things with glitter and seduce us away from what is real. They try to lure us into a world of delusion, unreality, and shadows. And so I thought, in encouraging you to open the Bible, uh, with me every day of the entire year, that we have to be real with what we're reading. And as you read in the first um, book of Genesis, you'll immediately fall into um, a relationship with Abraham, who, it's great, God asked him to follow him, and he doesn't know where he's going. And I think this is applicable to everyone. When God enters our life, he asks us to follow him. As we see coincided in January 1, 2, and 3 in the book of Matthew, you'll read an Old Testament passage. And in your New Testament passage, when you read about Matthew, what does he say? It's Jesus calling people to what? follow him. And this is the great message, the peak of the week that we're going to see. We're asked to follow men and women, young and old. It's not surprising 
that they often will show you Jesus in the Old Testament concealed and in the New Testament revealed. So what do we what do we see in the book of Genesis? And I have my notes because as a church we have preached through the Old Testament and preached through the New Testament. And what happens is God begins to ask us to follow him. And it's not uncommon that we're confused. We don't know where we're going, but still we see in Abraham's life he chose to go with God. He chose to follow God without kicking and screaming. And he chose to trust God to provide for him and his family. And it's an amazing message that all of us can be reading over um, the year in Genesis chapters 1 this week, all the way um, through chapter 18. What did God do in the lives of these people? And you'll also find they had two-way conversations with God. Again, in the New Testament, what happens? We begin to read in Matthew, Jesus asks people to follow him. Not surprising. They begin to follow him and things happen in their lives. They're asked to give up certain things, go certain places, uh, regroup, think things through differently, not religiously, but applying to their lives the teachings of Jesus. You'll read a psalm every single day, and they become your personal praise prayers. I want you to paraphrase them. I've used the My Partner Prayer Notebook. For those of you on YouTube, you can see that I'm holding up My Partner Prayer Notebook, and it's a pattern for me to talk to God and listen to God. I use the Change Your Life Daily Bible as God's voice to me, and I use the My Partner Prayer Notebook as my conversations written, um, and I keep them written to God. And what happens? I get ideas. I get um, enthusiasm. I get conviction. I get, um, actually, I got the idea for the lead house in my partner prayer notebook. So when I encourage you to read through the Old Testament and read through the New Testament every single day, take notes. God's speaking to you. In the psalm, write a prayer. It's, you know, Eugene Peterson said that, um, the Psalms, for most Christian centuries, were taught, would teach people how to pray. They were the prayers for every Christian century. So if you don't know how to pray, the Psalms are a perfect place to begin learning how to pray, just by paraphrasing them. And then finally, the Proverbs, and those are usually zingers. They will cause you, call you, to um get wisdom in your life, or at least give you a mirror of what your life might look like in comparison to wisdom. So the Change Your Life Daily Bible, 15 minutes a day. If you're on YouTube, you can see that I'm holding it up. You look up today's date. You read the passage for the day, Old Testament, New Testament, Proverbs and Psalm. This week, out of the gate, creation, um, Abraham, and suddenly in the New Testament, Jesus is born. He is a young boy. Then he um, begins to travel and call fishermen, first of all, to come alongside and be his followers. And what do they do? They follow. And it's the same thing God is asking of us. The Psalms will lead you to pray and to little glimpses of wisdom or glimmers or, or, or shots that will encourage you to um, grow in your understanding of God. In terms of encouragement to each other, I um, you can see, if you, again, are on YouTube watching, I have a list of books. And when I preach on Sundays, I bring books, usually uh, four, maybe, three or four, with a quote that I'm going to share. And the reason I, I bring my books to encourage people is because um, 100 years ago, 75 years ago, 200 years ago, some people wrote um, words of, inspiration that are um, hard to replace, and they remain in your mind. They're very memorable. One of those stories came in a book of mine, and this is my encouragement to you today, about Hen Henry Nowen. He was a priest, and he worked at the end of his life in a facility with disabled men and women. And he um, 
had spent so much time uh, preaching and with students and, and, and teaching. He was a brilliant uh, priest and theologian, and he took some time off and he went to a retreat center, and he had hoped just to get away and, and be alone and have a silent retreat, and it happened to be a high school campus as well. The uh, head of the, the the headmaster had come to Henry and said, "Hey, could you just lead a little retreat for these high school kids?" And he said, "No, no, no, I can't do that. I came I came to have a silent retreat on my own. I would have to do too much preparation." And the headmaster said to him, "Prepare? Why, Henry, you've been a Christian for forty years and a priest for twenty, and a few high school kids want to have a retreat. What do you have to prepare?" What these boys and girls want is for you to be a part of their lives in God for just a few days. If you would pray half an hour in the morning and sing for an hour in the choir and do your spiritual reading, you'll have much more to say than you could possibly give even in 10 retreats. The question is, you see, Henry, is not to prepare, but to live in a state of ongoing preparedness so that when someone who is drowning comes into your life, you can reach out and help. It might be 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, or 9 o'clock. One time you might call it preaching, another time teaching. Then counseling or later administration. But let the people who come into your life who are drowning be a part of your life in God. And that is um, from the book Time Enough to Minister by Henry Nowen. And you would love any of the books by Henry Nowen. And that's my encouragement to you. And it leads, you know, it's a wonderful segue into being an advocate for the young generation. Um, Right at the end of 2021, the Surgeon General came out. Uh, And his words were, he sounded the alarm about the crisis in youth mental health. And he said to a nation, our obligation to act is not just medical, it's moral. This is a moment to demand change. And I would encourage you to um, follow along with reports such as by the Surgeon General on the mental health of our young generation. I also have a wonderful uh, book and resource I encouraged all the leaders in my church to read by a Christian doctor. It's called Hope Always. Our young adults, our young generation is struggling in ways that have never approached the level of depression and anxiety um, that is apparent now in our nation due to not only a pandemic, but social media. And if you'll even look up um, the Surgeon General's uh, recent mandate, he's really saying these are significant public health challenges that demand American people's immediate attention. And that's why I have um, really made advocacy for the young generation a tenant of the Lead House, which is my prayer and fellowship house in Washington, D.C. It is, yes, powerful for a leader to be loyal to God's word. It's important for a leader to be encouraging in their words, in their lifestyle. But to overlook the young generation is a big miss, in my opinion. Every single person, parent, professor, pastor, no matter what uh, genre, uh, you working in your life, no matter um, your vocation, we must be advocates for the young generation, taking time to listen, taking time uh, to share uh, your personal experiences with them. And I agree with the Surgeon General. It is um, time that all Americans give immediate attention to the young generation. That can be in your friend group, in your family, in your church. You can be a volunteer. You can um, become more educated in certain aspects of what is um, pressing into the lives of these teenagers. So I'll always bring a resource or a source of um, encouragement for you to take that week and step out, learn more, read more, speak up more, especially to the young generation. So we've looked at 
um, how we can be loyal to God's Word this week, how to encourage each other, um, follow in the footsteps of Henry Nouwen, how to be an advocate for the young generation, start with the Surgeon General's warning, um, his sound of the alarm, and then finally, I will always give you an, uh, a reason to be devoted to prayer. Um, for those of you who know me and have known me over all these years, I always quote um, from E.M. Bounds, for example, um, a 19th century prayer author and pastor. One of my favorite books is Power and Prayer. And he said this, and I close with this and remind you that as you pray, and in the My Partner Prayer Notebook, honestly, I keep a prayer list that is quite long. And I would encourage you to do the same, to pray for people by name. He said this, talking to men for God is a great thing, but talking to God for men is greater still. He will never talk well and with real success to men for God who has not learned well how to talk to God for men. I want you to be encouraged and join me next week for the Weekly Lead Podcast. I'm your host, Becky Tirabasi.